Hello, church. It's good to be together again. Thank you for joining us for this, for this lesson, for these thoughts. I hope we can process some of the things that God is doing. Did you notice that I said, welcome church? I've heard a lot of things. I've seen a lot of things in the mail and the online and on the news. It's all about churches reopening. I want to assure you that we are not reopening. I want to assure you that God's church never closed. We don't have to reopen. No, we haven't been able to meet in our building together as a group for about 10 weeks now. And that's been hard on us, hasn't it? We like to be together. We like to see each other. There's encouragement in being together. And God even says we need to be together. We need to share the, the encouragement and the sh words with each other as we worship God and draw each other nearer to God. But the church has not closed. The church is not the doors of the building, is it? We've heard that for all of our lives. Those of us who've grown up in, within the, Christ, the circles of Christianity, the church isn't the building. You don't have to be at the building to be part of the church. And I want to assure you, this church has not closed during this quarantine. As a matter of fact, I've been encouraged about all the things that have, ha have happened and how we have been Christians in the truest sense. I think that we have been Christians, so we have practiced Christianity a little bit more like they did in the first century than we have for many years. In the first century, they met from home to home. They didn't have a big place to meet. They could meet at the temple courts, but not for very long. Pretty soon, they were pushed out of Jerusalem. They had no buildings. They had nowhere to go. They met in homes. They met on the street. They met at the market. And they practiced their Christianity in the world, not just on Sunday morning at the church. Now, I'm afraid sometimes in America, we have gotten a little too conditioned to think that the church is what is where we practice our faith. That's not where it is. It's in the world. He sends us out as light and salt in the world. So I'm encouraged to hearing to be here excuse me, to be hearing the stories of Christianity at work during this quarantine. This church has learned to be flexible. And that's the way God's church has been throughout all generations, and even is today in different parts of the world. Different parts of the world, it's illegal to be a Christian. And the Christians hide out, and they meet in small groups, and they keep their eyes open. Last November, I was teaching a group of pastors in Vietnam, where it is illegal. And we had to be very careful, looking over our shoulders, making sure though we weren't watched or seen by the authorities. It was, it's a little scary. It's a different feel than it is here where we can just meet in the open. We have this freedom. But that's not the way the church functions in a lot of the world. This, during this quarantine, we have met in different situations, been very flexible. I've heard, heard the stories of the groups that are meeting online and how intimate that has been and how people have been able to share with each other in ways that they can't do on a Sunday morning with 300 people sitting in rows looking at the back of each other's heads. And it's been rich for them. It's been rich for me to be able to meet with smaller groups and to really spend time talking about Jesus and what he means. And then to be Jesus in our neighborhoods. And I've heard the stories of how people have reached out and helped their neighbors and touched their neighbors, even in this culture of self, of uh, social distancing. I can't even say that word anymore. Even though we're socially distant, there are ways that we touch people. People have been going to the store for each other, helping each other out, showing a care and a concern for each other. We spent time in worship in small groups online. I hope that you've taken advantage of that. It's been a rich experience. It's been different, but it's been rich. We've had things that have continued. Mommy Connection has continued. Our worship sessions have continued online. They're different, but they're not closed. Our prayer meetings have been rich. And I would encourage you to join us on Wednesday nights. God says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear them 
and I will heal their land. And our land needs healing today, doesn't it? We are split up by so many different factions and so many different tribes. This is not a land of unity. It is a land of division and it needs healing. And what do we do to heal? We seek God's face. We turn to him. He is our strength. So every Wednesday night at 630, join us. We've been meeting online. Lisa sends out a, an invitation every week. Please, it is a rich time for us to humble ourselves and seek God's face together. We've continued that. We have discovered that we can hold elder meetings, ministry meetings, all kinds of different meetings online, almost as effective as we could before maybe more so and that may continue it has been a blessing in many ways to go through this quarantine i just thank god that we had the technology at our fingertips at this time don't you where we can still be in contact with each other we can still see each other it's been good i know that several people have even expressed the joy of, of being able to join their churches across the country where then maybe they grew up their hometown churches where they were children where the rest of their family may live and they've been able to join them it's been a rich experience that probably would not have happened had we not been through this quarantine i know that phone calling has been going on you have been reaching out and touching people i promise you the elders have been on the phone with individual members more in these past 10 weeks than probably in the five years before that. It has been a rich time, a blessing for, for that. Our contributions have continued, and I thank you for that. The ministry has been ongoing. You know, it's, I heard somebody say the other day, why should we give? We're not meeting. <laughs> but the ministry of the church isn't contingent on meeting at the church building, is it? The ministry of the church is ongoing. And there have been people who have been helped, people who have been in trouble with financially and with food and different things, and they've been helped through the church and through your generosity. I want you to know there's more to the church than meeting in the building. I know that um, we have shown that God does not depend on us meeting at a church building for his name to be spread out in the world. And I hope and I pray that we learn something from this quarantine, that we can be the church every day, wherever we are, and we can represent Christ to the world in a way that the world doesn't see on Sunday morning. A lot of times the world is divided on Sunday morning, where the Christians hole up in their churches and the rest of the world goes about their business. We need to be integrated in all of the world. God sent us out to be light and salt in a dark world. And I promise you, there's a lot of darkness in this world that needs God's people to be integrating into that darkness and shedding the light. He calls on me. He calls on you. If we wear the name of Christ, that we need to be the light and the salt in the world. So we've learned that the church is not the building. We've learned the church is not closed. Even when it's illegal, you cannot close God's church. Next week, we hope to meet again in the building to be able to sing together, to worship together. And that's one of my, it's one of the things I have missed is a time to sit and sing and lift God's voice, lift our voices to God all together. And I'm looking forward to that time again. But we've learned that that's not what all Christianity is about. We need to worship God wherever we are, whenever we are, wherever we are. Church is not the building. But I want to share with you, as much as it's not the building, this is a dark world. And I know many of you have been just as troubled, you've been agonizing over the things that have happened in Minneapolis in the past weeks. The things that are going on today with the, the rioting, the protesting. I know we've seen the video over and over on the news 
of the police officer with his knee on the neck of George Floyd. We grieve over that. What a horrible, awful picture. And we've been asking the questions, where is the righteousness in that? Where is the justice in that? How could that ever be right? What do we as Christians do with that? And I want to share with you a couple things. One, none of us know all the answers. In my world, I don't see any justification for what I saw on the film. I can't tell you what was going on in that crowd. I don't know. I wasn't there, and it hasn't been shown. I know that the death of that man is tragic, and I'm angered by it. But I'm also angered at the response of people I know that there are people who feel helpless, they feel powerless, and sometimes they strike out in angry and powerful ways to try to be heard. But a lot of the things that are going on are not just people who are angry. And I want to guard against reacting out of emotion, but to react out of a, a God-given, heartfelt response. God said very clearly to the Israelites, if you follow my law, you'll be righteous. And he gave them 612 different commands. We know the Ten Commandments. He gave them 612. When you read through Leviticus, through Numbers, through Exodus, you find out all these other commands, all the rest of the law. And he said, you keep those laws and you'll be righteous. Nobody could keep even the Ten Commandments, much less the 612. So in the book of Micah, God boiled it down to us. He said, here's what's really important. Here's what I've really asked of you through all these commands. I've asked you to live justly. Look out for the people who need looking out for. Don't false, don't wrongly accuse somebody. Think before you speak. He said, be slow to speak, slow to anger, quick to listen quick to understand, pray for wisdom, as Solomon did to rule those God's people. So slow down, be quick to listen, slow to speak, but look out for people who need looking out for. What James says, he says we need to pay special attention. Here's what pure and perfect religion is, where you care for the fatherless, you care for the widows, you care for the people who are in need, who need somebody to speak out for them. If it's somebody of a different race and they need somebody to advocate for them, do it. Speak out. Care for the person who needs it. Now the Bible warns everybody, the rich and the poor, are subject to sin. Just because somebody is wealthy doesn't mean they're guilty. Just because somebody's poor doesn't need they mean they need to be shown a special favor. Justice speaks about what's right and wrong. And where you see wrong, speak up. Advocate for somebody. Step in. But first, listen. Try not to respond out of emotion. I know it's hard because we see something and our gut twists and we want to strike out. But that's when we take a breath and we ask God, temper my thoughts, show me what you want. Help me to be your hands and feet in your presence in this world. Not my injustice, my sense of injustice, but God, what is right and what is wrong? And what are the facts? I need to know these things. And then he told Micah, he said, I asked you to, to live justly and I want you to love mercy. Be merciful, be forgiving, understand none of us could keep the laws that God gave to us. None of us from the very beginning have been able to do what God wanted us to do. We are all sinners. There is none who does righteous, not even 
one, are there? We are all dependent on the grace and the mercy of God. And he says, I want you to be merciful as well. Before you start passing judgment, before you start being a respecter of persons, you practice mercy. You love mercy, Micah says. And then the last thing he asks us in that book of Micah is to walk humbly with our God, realizing I'm completely dependent on his grace and his mercy. There is nothing that sets me apart as better than anybody else, except the fact that I'm forgiven and I'm trying to walk according to God's plan, his righteousness. I'm loving mercy. I'm trying to do justice. And I'm walking in a humble state with my God doing things his way instead of mine. He's told us it's not about me. It's not about us. It's about Jesus. It's about what Jesus wants for us. He's talked about the fact that we are here to bring glory to him. We are children of light. And so we find out what pleases our father. That's what Paul says in Roman in Ephesians chapter 5. The children of light look and they search, how can I please you, God? Not myself, not other people. How do I please you? And maybe it is by pleasing others. Maybe it is by looking out for somebody who needs somebody to speak up for them. Or to share some groceries with them. Or some toilet paper. Or a kind word. All kinds of things that we can do to be God's messengers. Not the least of which is not just to be good people, but to be bearers of a message. We are good people, not because of ourselves, but because God has loved us and God has sent his son to die for us while we were still sinners. We are blessed above all of our wildest imaginations that God calls us children. And he only calls us children out of a great price that he paid for us. That he sent his son to die for us while we were still sinners. So go this week. Remember that Jesus loves you. But he loves that neighbor. And he loves that person picketing down on the street corner too. And he loves the addict. He loves the people who have never known his name. He knows people, he loves people who think and act completely different from you. And he sends us out to be that light and salt in this dark and tasteless world. Pray with me. Father God, this is a dark world. There is injustice all around us. There is a lack of mercy there is judgment that flies right and left. There's anger, there's hatred. Oh, Father, may that never be named among your people. Father, you've told us that, there, that you are not a respecter of persons. You don't look at us by our outward symptoms. You look at our hearts. Father, help us to look at the hearts of people, to see beyond their color, to see beyond their culture, to see beyond their <clears throat> the dialect and their language. Father, help us to see people as you see them and to love people as you love them. God, we thank you for loving us. We thank you that you have paid a price for us so that we have the chance to live with you. Oh, Father, we are blessed and we thank Thank you, God, we thank you for your grace and for your mercy. We just pray that you would help us to be the same people of grace and mercy so that your name is honored, not just on Sunday mornings, Father, please, but every day, every place, everywhere we go, may we bring the sweet aroma of your presence and may people praise your name because of your people. God, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So today, 
As you observe the Lord's Supper, whether in your home, by yourself, online with another group of people, please stop and take the time and enjoy the time to really remember Jesus. What was he like? What did he say? Did he complain about the government? Did he complain about the soldiers? Did he complain about the racism that was going on between the Romans and the Jews? Did he complain about those things? Or did he say, I lay down my life for every sinner in the world. I freely give myself, not claiming heaven or power or authority for myself, but I humble myself, I become nothing, so that people who don't deserve it can have the hope of life eternal. Remember the things that Jesus did. Remember what was important to him and tell each other those stories. As you hold that bread and you remember Jesus, remember what he was like so we can be like him. And when you take that cup that reminds us of the brand new covenant sealed in the blood of Jesus, give thanks that you are not bound to the sin of this world, but you are set free under a new covenant where you have hope that can never be taken away, it can never spoil, it can never fade. Hope that God gives us because He takes our sin away. Oh, thank you, Lord. We look forward to being back together again. This week, you are the church. The church is not closed. It never has been. Be the church. God bless you all.